Yo family, what's up? I know I look crazy right now. I look crazy right now. I know, but there's a reason why I look a little bit crazy. So, today, I'm giving y'all a new segment. This is going to be something that I'm starting on my channel. I'm going to see how it plays out. And then, if it plays out good, it's going to be something that I keep doing over and over again. But y'all got to let me know. Y'all got to like, subscribe, and comment. And let me know if you want more of this realness right now. First, I want to say shout out to Sydney Black. Sydney Black kind of inspired me to do this. She kind of inspired me to, 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 to add this segment. Because she does a, a segment called Makeup in History. And she does her makeup, but she tells you about certain things that have happened in history, in, in history over time, like current, current events history. So I like the stories that she tells. It's not really stories because they actually happen, but I like the stuff that she, she talks about. So I said, you know what? I could do that. Because there's a lot of things that people don't know about. And y'all know... Um, up until recently, I was into the whole dating thing. And I ran into a lot of dumb niggas. And they didn't know about a lot of the things. Like, I would try to start conversation about certain things. And they'd be like, well, what's that? What you talking about? When did that happen? Stuff like that. So I said, you know what? Let me start a segment. And I'm going to call this segment, Let Me Put You On. Let me put you on to some real shit. All right, so. Let's get it started, y'all. And I'm going to be doing my makeup while I do this. Now, for you dudes out there, y'all don't have to pay attention to, to me actually doing my makeup. Just listen to what I'm saying because I'm, I'm about to educate you about some stuff. Right? Now, for the past couple of weeks, we all been, like, pissed off, especially black women. We all been really pissed off about what has been going on with the Breonna Taylor case. You know, we, we found out recently that... These niggas is not about to be prosecuted for nothing. These dudes got indicted for shooting a wall. For shooting a fucking wall, y'all. A wall. Bullets that hit a wall mean more than this girl's life. Than this girl losing her life when she wasn't even doing anything and she was sleeping. Okay? So, we're all pissed about it. Of course, naturally, we're all pissed about it because this is another example of, yet again, of an example of black lives not mattering enough in America. But, if y'all don't know, this is not the first time something like this has happened. So, I took it upon myself to decide... To talk about something that might piss off a few people. Especially if you don't know the story. It might piss you off. But you know what? When you pissed off, that invokes change. So, I don't want to hear no shit about, oh, this is making me mad. I don't want to hear about this. And this is too much. And this is making me upset. And It's supposed to. It's supposed to make you upset. Because if you're upset, you can bring change. You can bring forth change. So, today... On the first episode of Let Me Put You On, we are going to talk about a man named James Bird Jr. Now, I'm going to take y'all back to 1998. In Jasper, Texas. 1998, as far as like the world... Um, the Clinton scandal was happening, you know, Clinton was getting his dick sucked by a white girl and denying it because, you know, naturally that's what people do in politics. They fucking lie. But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie. Not a single time. Never. These allegations are false. And I need to go back to work for the American people. Thank you. So, Clinton, <laughs> Clinton was getting his dick sucked, you know, 
and denying it in front of everybody, in front of millions of people. Like, oh, no, 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 I'm not doing that. Um, what else was going on? This was a year. This was a year after Biggie was killed. We're going to go to hip-hop. This is a year after Biggie was killed and two years after Tupac was killed. Um, Jay had dropped Hard Knock Life Volume 2. DMX dropped two albums that year. Um, and Lauren Hill had dropped the masterpiece, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. You know what I mean? So, a lot of people were really on some shit like, you know, like they are now. Does racism really exist in America? No, racism doesn't exist. Of course not. Black people aren't oppressed. This isn't the 50s anymore. Nah, black people aren't oppressed, any, aren't oppressed no more. Well, then... This James Byrd Jr. case happened. So let me tell y'all. James Byrd Jr. was a black man in Jasper, Texas. And this particular day, on June 7th of 1998, he was leaving a baby shower. He was leaving a baby shower for his niece. Right? Now, everybody that knew this man... Said he was a very fun-loving kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? He loved music. He was a musician. He could sing. He could play music. You know, that was his thing. Now, in the South, it's not common. I mean, it's not uncommon for somebody to be on their way home and see somebody that they know. Now, me, I'm from New York. I don't know none of, none of the, none of, no, no type of shit like this ever happening, but apparently in the South, it's not uncommon if you live in one of those rural, remote areas or whatever, and you're walking for you to see somebody that'll give you a ride home. So, James Bird is leaving this um, baby shower and decides to walk home. So he's walking home. On his way home, a pickup truck pulls up. Inside that pickup truck are three white men. One of them he happened to know, right? A dude named Sean Allen Berry, right? Now, they didn't know each other, know each other like that. Like, they wasn't friends, but they were acquaintances. Like, they seen each other in town. So naturally, he felt comfortable enough. I guess they knew each other enough for him to feel comfortable enough to get into the car with this dude, to get into the truck with this dude. You know? Problem was, he didn't know the other two dudes in the car. The other two dudes in the car happened to be white supremacists. One name was Lawrence Brewer and the other one his name was John King right now Lawrence Brewer decided that he was going to be a white supremacist in jail prior to this incident he had just came home from jail and had became a white supremacist in jail for whatever reason. But he just decided that he was going to be a white supremacist in jail. He was serving time in jail prior to this incident for, I think, burglary. Yeah, it was burglary. Now, John King had also served time in jail. I think for the same exact shit. Now, John King, according to him, while he was in jail, he got gang raped. This is his words. Supposedly, he got gang raped by a bunch of black men. So because he got gang raped by a bunch of black men, he decided, oh, I'm going to be a white supremacist. I don't like black people. And I definitely don't like black men. Similar to Lawrence Brewer. He said that he became a white supremacist for protection in jail. Right? 
So, you got James Byrne Jr. in this car with Sean Barry, who he kind of knew, Lawrence Brewer, and John Kane. Two white, white, white supremacists. So he's thinking, they're going to take me home. I'm asking them to drive me home. They're going to take me home. I don't got no reason to be scared that anything is going to happen to me. Because I know one of the guys. These motherfuckers decide, oh no, we're not going to take this nigga home. We're going to take him in the middle of the woods. In the middle of nowhere. We can't nobody hear him scream. Can't nobody... um help him, none of that stuff. We're going to take him deep out there. But can't nobody get to him and can't nobody hear him scream. They beat the shit out of him. Right? Beat the shit out of him. They urinate on him. They defecate on him. And spray paint his face black. Right? They do all that, but that wasn't enough. According to Sean Barry, he had nothing to do with it. He was just there witnessing this happen. He didn't do he didn't do anything supposedly, but he witnessed this happening. Right? So after they urinate on him and defecate on him. And beat the shit out of him. And spray paint his face black. They say oh no no no. That's not enough. That's not enough for us. We are gonna tie him to a truck. We are gonna chain him to the back of a truck. By his ankles. So. They chain him to the back of the pickup truck. And decide to drag him. They dragged him three miles y'all. Three fucking miles. According to coroner's reports, he was alive for a lot of the dragon. He was alive. He was alive and he felt everything for the whole dragon. Well, I can't say the whole dragon because halfway, they drug him, they dr they drag they drug him three miles. Halfway into the dragon, his body hit, I think they call it a culvert. I'm guessing that's like concrete, a piece of concrete or something like that. It hit. His body hit because he was trying to keep his head up from hitting the concrete. So he, he was being dragged and he was trying to keep his shoulders up and his head up. But halfway through, his body hits this culvert. Y'all forgive me if I'm saying that word wrong. So his body hits, a cul hits this culvert. And his head and arm are, are ripped from his body. So he's de decapitated halfway through the dragon. Right? These motherfuckers don't stop. They keep going. They keep going until they reach their they final destination. Which was... A black church somewhere in Jasper. So by the time they reach this church in Jasper, all that's left is his torso and his legs, right? Pieces of him are spread out throughout the whole road, whatever road that was. I don't remember the name of the road, y'all. Reach the final destination, which I told y'all was a black church. That's a black church. And they dump his torso in front of this black church. It was a black church and a cemetery. And they dump his body in front of this black church in this cemetery. And they say, oh, well, job well done. Let's go to a barbecue. So these niggas go to a barbecue like nothing happened. So the next day, the next morning, you know, his family is looking for him like, you know, he was supposed to come back because I believe that the family there was the baby shower but they were also having like a, a family get together I'm guessing there was a family get together also they're not hearing from him but I don't think anybody was alarmed right away but the next day people are driving along that road and they're seeing pieces 
of somebody laid out on the road. They see his head. They see his arm. Flesh. Just flesh along the road. And they decide to call the, in the authorities or whatever like that. Now, y'all, I don't completely remember how they identified. Like, how they figured out that it was, you know, these three motherfuckers that actually did it to him. But I think it has something to do with the truck. I can't remember, y'all. It has something to do with the truck. Something was left from the truck. So, they arrest these three bastards or whatever like that. They identify the remains as being James Bird Jr.'s remains. And these motherfuckers are put on trial. Now, Barry, the one that he was acquainted with, the one that he knew... Barry says he didn't have nothing to do with it. That he was there. He just witnessed it. He he didn't have nothing to do with it though. That he just he just witnessed what happened, but he didn't have nothing to do with it. But he said that he would testify against the other two dudes. He would say what happened, he would say what was done and all type of stuff because he agreed to do that. This motherfucker, when it came to sentencing, he only got life in prison. Whereas in the other two, Brewer and King, got the death penalty. Now, they were um, the first two white men ever in Texas to get sentenced to death. This whole entire case made national news because it was like, yo, we in 1998, y'all. Y'all y'all just heard me say what was going on in 1998. We in 1998, and this is basically a modern-day lynching. They took this black man and tied him to the back of a truck and drug him until he was headless and armless. How the fuck could this happen in the United States? Craziness, y'all. Pure craziness. So, like I said, Barry decided to testify against the two motherfuckers. So, in, in, in return for him testifying against them, he ended up getting just life in prison. And the other two got sentenced to death by lethal injection. Now, Lawrence Brewer, let me tell y'all about Lawrence Brewer. This motherfucker here. Orange Brewer was a very proud white supremacist. He did not feel bad about what happened. In fact, before they executed him, the news interviewed him and asked him, do you have any remorse about what happened? He said, absolutely not. And I would kill that nigga again if I could. Now, in the state of Texas, there was a certain thing they did where you're about to be executed and you get asked what you would like your last meal to be. <laughs> y'all. Let me tell y'all. So they take, they ask this motherfucker, well, well, you know, we about to kill you. What would you like your last meal to be? I wrote it down, y'all. Let me, let me, let me tell y'all <laughs> what this dude decided to do. Okay. So his last meal was chicken fried steaks with gravy and sliced onions, a triple patty bacon cheeseburger, a cheese omelet with ground beef, tomatoes, onions, bell peppers, and jalapenos, a bowl, a bowl of fried okra with ketchup. One pound of barbecue meat with a half a loaf of white bread. Three fully loaded fajitas. A meat lover's pizza. One pint of blue bell vanilla ice cream. A slab of peanut butter fudge with crushed peanuts. 
and three root beers. Three root beers. This is what he ordered for his last meal, right? They say, oh, goddamn, okay. They go and get it and bring it to him. This motherfucker says, ah, never mind. I don't really want it. No, nah, I don't want it. You can take it away. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Take the shit. I don't want it. So the senator of Texas is like, oh, yeah, motherfucker? So that's what you're going to do, huh? That's how you feel? I gotcha. No problem, sir. And... He appealed to, who is it? He appealed to the prison officials of the jail. And said, okay, y'all see what just happened right now, right? With this motherfucker ordering all this shit for his last meal and then telling us that he don't want it. You know what? From now on, nobody in the state of Texas, when they're about to be executed, is going to get a last meal. He asked the prison officials to, to make it, to make that a rule. And it got granted. And it was effective immediately. So now in the state of Texas, if you're about to be executed, you don't get a last meal. Thanks to this motherfucker, Lawrence Brewer. Right? Now, Lawrence Brewer, he, he was executed on September 21st, 2011. He was executed by a lethal injection. And like I said to y'all, he had no remorse. He did not care. He was not sorry. And he said that he would do it again. Now... Let's talk about King, John King. According to him, he was gang raped by a bunch of black men. Y'all remember I told y'all that. According to him, he was gang raped by a bunch of black men. And that's what supposedly turned him into a white supremacist and made him feel like he had to do the white supremacist thing. Nothing personally against James Byrd except the fact that he was a black man. Now, as far as him being executed, I can't say that he had any type of remorse. He wasn't blatant with it like Brewer were, like Brewer was. But, you know, he was executed. They bring him into the execution chamber. You know, as usual, they ask, you know, well, do you have any last words? Do you have anything that you want to say? And he basically made a statement that basically said, well, if you ain't got no money, this is what happens to you. If you ain't rich, then you basically get executed. If you ain't got no money. Never said he was sorry. Never said, you know, and, and in fact, he blamed Barry. He basically said that the, the way Barry, Barry is basically blaming the two of them saying that they was the ones that did all the, the, the dirty work and he was just there and he just watched and he just witnessed it. He's like, oh, no, no, no. That motherfucker had more to do with it than y'all think. And because he decided to cooperate, y'all will never know. And if you ain't got no money, this is what happens to you. That's what he said. So... King was executed last year, y'all. April 24th, 2014. I mean, 2014. 2019. He was executed last year. Now, y'all, like I said, the only reason why I'm telling this story as my first story is because, like I said, we're all a little upset. We're not even upset, a little upset. We're all very upset by the whole Breonna Taylor situation. You know what I mean? And we're mad. Now, we got a right to be mad because things like this have been going on forever. As you can see, as I just told y'all this story. You know what I mean? But when you're mad, that's usually when things get done. When you're pissed off and you're mad. So, let's talk about what came out of that entire situation. a sad situation yes it was fucked up but because of the death of 
James Byrd Jr. The law recognized hate crimes because it just so happened that the same year that James Byrd was killed, Matthew Shepard was killed. And they considered that a hate crime. Which, before that happened, there was no such thing as hate crimes. It was like, okay, if you get killed, you get killed. We're not going to say that it had anything to do with your race. We're not going to say that it had anything to do with your sexuality. You know, murder is murder. But because of James Byrd Jr. and Matthew Shepard, now the law recognizes that as being a hate crime. And hate crimes carry a whole lot more of time. And a crucial, a more crucial punishment rather than it just being murder or capital murder. Because you know there's different types of murder under the law. But now, if you kill somebody under a hate crime, your punishment could be harsher. As you can see, these two niggas got um, the death penalty. And... They were the first white men to ever be convicted and sentenced to death in the state of Texas. This had never happened before. So that's like the only good thing you could kind of say that came out of the entire thing, y'all. So that's basically it, y'all. That's basically it for the story. Um, James Bird family um, has visited... They went with Dr. King, y'all. There's a documentary out there if y'all want to watch it. I believe it's called Jasper, Texas. I believe that's what it's called. I could be wrong, y'all. If not, I'll insert it. I'll insert the name here, somewhere here, or whatever like that. But the name is called Jasper, Texas, I believe. But his family went up to the jail where he was at. Where Well, they didn't visit Brewer and King. Because like I said, them niggas wasn't sorry. But Barry, Barry showed remorse. So they went up there with Martin Luther King's son to talk to him and, you know, forgive him. And his family is very big on that. His family was very against the death penalty. They did not want um, nobody to be executed. They were very against it. And they were very heavy on forgiveness and we have to forgive and we have to love our fellow man even though they hate us and all type of stuff. Listen, I'm all for forgiveness, y'all, but son, you drag my father, God forbid, you drag my father three miles and rip his head off and rip his arm off and piss on him and shit on him and spray paint his face black and I'm supposed to believe, I'm supposed to forgive you. That's tough, y'all. That's tough. That's a very tough thing to, to, to swallow. Like, but they were his his daughter, his son. He had two daughters and one son. And they were very heavy on no, we have to forgive, y'all. We have to forgive. We can't be like the murderers. We can't be like the killers. Listen, I'm all for that, but I don't know if I could do all that. That's a lot, y'all. That's a lot. They tortured that man. They tortured that man. Can y'all imagine being alive while you're being dragged three miles? By the time they dropped him off at that black church and that black cemetery, only thing that was left was his torso. So can you imagine? And, and they said that he was alive throughout the whole thing until the middle where his head and his arm got ripped off. Can y'all imagine that? Can you imagine being alive? I don't think I could deal with that. I don't think I could take that and be forgiven. That's some, that, y'all got some strong faith in God. If y'all are cool, not cool, but if you can find it in your heart to forgive somebody like that. But anyway, so that's it, y'all. That's basically it for the story. Um, Y'all let me know what y'all think about this whole segment. This is my first time doing it. So, <laughs> y'all, if I came off a little bit like, you know, if I kept repeating myself and all that, I apologize. But like I said, this is my first time doing it. I'll get better at it. You know, I'll get better at it. You know, just give me some time. I'll get better at it. But yeah, y'all like, comment, and subscribe and let me know. Y'all can even make little recommendations of, of other stories that you might want me to tell. And all that good stuff, y'all. And I love y'all. And like I said, when you're angry, being angry provokes change. 
You know, if this makes you mad, if this story makes you mad, if Breonna Taylor's story makes you mad, Trayvon Martin, you know what I'm saying, Jacob Blake, if any of that makes y'all mad, get out there and do something about it. You know what I'm saying? Do something about it. It starts with you. It starts with us. If we can't unite as a people, we not getting nowhere, y'all. So, yeah, y'all, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what's up. Let me know what you think. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.